Three engineers are going to compete to design the best microcontroller board in only two hours. The only requirements, power the microcontroller, program it, and make it do something. Bonus points though, if they can squeeze in any extra features. But with the clock ticking and the stress of working on camera, can they actually finish on time and get it right? Well, let's find out. Okay, we have Arwood who is using Easy EDA Pro. We have Johan who is using Altium and we have Kirsch who is also using Altium. Let's get started. Ready, set, go. Arwood is looking up the USB-C connector. That's the advantage of Easy EDA. You just look it up on LCSC, you grab the LCSC part number, you go into your Easy EDA, you paste the part number and you know you got the correct part. It's a big advantage. Looks like Johan's got the STM32 down. Yeah, this is the 28-pin. The I want to go for, you know, one of the smaller footprints. At first, I was thinking, let's try the BGA option, but I, I talked myself back off of that because... Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be more Yeah, worried that's than... inviting some extra challenges for you. <laughs> right. I, I didn't realize this came in a BGA version. But... Yeah. Arwood? So you're on the PCB, so that's a different approach. I've not seen anyone do like a, two components on the schematic and then start looking at the PCB. I just want to get an idea of how I'm going to lay everything out. What are you going for as far as the programming? How are you planning to program it? I am doing some 2.54 pin headers standard, which come with all the cheap SD-Link programmers. But I'm also breaking out UART as well. If you're designing your own board, whether you're building a product that you plan to launch or you're just learning PCB design, be sure you check out the links in the description below. And I've added some helpful resources to speed things up and help you avoid costly mistakes. Johan, are you looking for a regulator? Is that what it looks yes, like? Yes, that's the next are step. Are you going for a linear or switching? Or? I think we'll stick with linear. I don't know. I'm trying to like minimize like BOM and fo uh, footprint, like, like, I guess, total allocated space ultimately. What about you, Arwood? Or what kind of power are you going for? I'm going to do a buck converter. I just need to decide which one. Oh, okay. But I'm going to grab the power from the USB. Arwood, I saw you had reverse current protection. Yeah, so what, this chip is for? very interesting. So this is extremely low dropout USB protection. So it's 0.5 amps. And it has a extremely low dropout right here. If we take a look at the data oh, sheet. Okay, interesting. So you can see the voltage drop max right here. So for 500 milliamps, it's 130 millivolts drop. So rather than using the standard diode, you use this and you get much lower voltage drop, which will allow for much more efficient USB operation. Well, that's an interesting package pin out there. Yeah, Johan? I'm going to go with this on the basis of that interesting package. This 4X2SON. Okay, guys, we have one hour and 30 minutes left. Johan is getting his reset and boot buttons, it looks like. Kirsch looks like he's doing the LDO. Yeah, I did the LDO, the input and output capacitors as per the data sheet. And so I'm trying to get cube and max. Okay, I think that's it for the basics here. Let's go to our PCB design update. So, Johan, you're just setting up your rules. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, exactly. Oh, now I need to add my USB pins to this. Kirsch, it looks like you're going through what Johan just went through. You're figuring out the boot mode for the STM. Yeah. I'll tell you, nowhere in the data sheet does it tell you, do you tie boot high or low? It just tells you what the two states do. So yeah, I'll, I'll tell you the default is it with it low. So you'll, you'll want to pull down and then a, a, a push button to pull it high. So you can put it in a bootloader. Okay. I appreciate that. Jeez. Like, I'm like, what? Where? Okay. So this, this should be fine. What do you think you have left in the schematic curse? Uh, it looks like mainly just your decoupling caps and the grounds, maybe decoupling cap caps, grounds, and this. I was looking. I thought I had a push button switch, which I do, but it connects to a microcontroller, which is weird. So I did that wrong in my library. Okay, guys, we are at the halfway point. You have one hour left. Do you guys use a uh, Chat GPT at all, like while designing? A for, huge obviously, portion can't. of my design oh, work is with Chat GPT, but I didn't know if I should pull that up for this competition. Uh, I was gonna say, I, like, my workflow is uploading all my data sheets usually off the bat to Chat GPT, and then like instead of combing through the data sheets, I will just like ask direct questions. It's so much faster. Arwood, are you doing four layers? Is that what you said? Four layer. What about you, uh, Johan? Yeah, I'm doing four layers right now too. Okay. For the CAN bus lines, they're supposed to be routed as close as possible, but since there's 
They're so close to each other. I think this might be the best way to do it. Oh, look at that. 0 0.013. Perfect. Here, I can tweak it style. Haha. <laughs> nice little can termination. Almost forgot something important. The pull downs on CC1 and CC2. Even though technically it's not fully up to spec on 5.1, but it works for most of the time. Oh, I really hate the design on the USB connectors where they put the hole for mounting. That makes it hard to route a thick V-Bus line. Okay guys, we have 45 minutes left. Are you done with this schematic, Kirsch, after you get these two switches hooked up? Is this the last you? No, I've, I've still got the SW. I'm gonna go with SWD uh, for the debug. And oh, okay, gotcha. So okay. I'm missing the header. Other than that, I'm thinking I'm okay. Unless I'm missing something major. Looks like you've got everything connected, Kirsch, ex except your, I guess the programming header is the only thing left. Yeah, the programming header. I keep forgetting. I think I'm connect, supposed to connect to PA 13 and 14 for the, yeah, I might have put my switch on the wrong pins. What size did you go with, Johan, on the passes? That's, you... that's what I'm looking at right now. So everything's supposed to be 0402. And then this is one, like, this is from a, from a manufacturer. I think this is like a Panasonic cap, but this looks like a mega 0402. Let's see if I want to correct that later. We'll get the routing done first. What are those big patterns? Is that on yours, Johan? Are those the switches? Yeah, yeah these, these are the switches. Oh, okay. oh they're, okay. They're Sometimes when things start to get cluttered, before I clean it up, I'll just keep everything on the, just the copper. Yep, yeah. Yeah, well, the DRC passes, so... Technically, I'm done. I just what? gotta clean up. Yeah. Please tell me there was, you had to fix something though, right? It wasn't clean the nope. first time. I run it continuously as I route. So I know oh, what's okay. left. Just so I know what I have left. Since I'm doing inner layer, I gave a, a via to each leg before doing the ground pours. So I knew everything has a good return path to the inner layers. I can see why you'd want to just have one layer, Johan. That's a, quite a pile of reference designators and everything stacked up there. Eventually, I'll like reduce the like line thickness and then respace them. But uh, for right now, we're just trying to push through as fast as possible. Looks like I made my PCB a bit too big. What do you? What is it that you're doing now? I'm trying sequential capacitor and resistor namings, but it looks like the new update kind of broke it. What is it that you're doing now, Johan? Are you just looking something to add yeah, to the microcontroller? Yeah, control? we're add a little uh, like gas sensor. It's like an easy thing for like gauging air quality, local air quality. Are those uh, just ground vias you've got around the perimeter, are we? Yep. Yeah, my shielding is when you go into place, you do suture vias, lines, you choose the network, then you get to choose the spacing. 20 minutes to go. Oh, that's messy. Okay, let's get to routing. 15 minutes left. What kind of the finishing touches are you doing, are we? I'm just making sure the silk screen is not on any UVs, that everything's the correct side up, that everything has the labels it needs to, so you know where everything is. Making sure it's presentable. What's your stack up, are we? It's four layer, where both inner layers are ground. There's a ground port top and bottom, and the power just routed via thick trace. I do believe it's done. The face of an easy EDA user when they're done. Okay, we have five minutes left. Johan, what's your status? I see it looks like mostly completed board. We're doing pretty good. Now I'm just cleaning up the actual uh, text designators, the, the component designators. How are things coming on with you, Kirsch? You've got uh, four minutes left. <laughs> I'm placing a last few components, routed most of the PCB without them, and I would need to update my text at the end. Okay, time is up. Everybody stop. Or would, if you wanted to, going over your board real quick, just pointing out what you've done. So here we have basically the simplest way to do a canvas sniffer board that you can read through USB. With the STM32F042, there's a little catch-all where you can't actually use the USB pins if you're going to use the canvas pin. So we actually have a little UART to USB. We're using a linear regulator for power, but a nice little trick to at least get a bit less of heat loss is we're using a low dropout USB protection for the VBUS so we don't get any feedback. Even when you're programming, if you decide to program with PowerX separately, you're not getting any feedback back into the USB bus. We also have USB ESD protection. We have the pull down. We got the USB connector. We also have nice decoupling everywhere that matters on the microcontroller. Technically, you don't need this many decoupling capacitors, but it's always 
to have more on your design and not place them, then not have enough, and then just think how you're gonna bodge them in because it's it's easier to not place. We have also 100 NF on both the analog supply and the digital IO supply. And on the canvas now, this is technically not the spec, uh, the way the lines are routed, they are equaling tuning, but technically on the canvas spec, you want the lines to be as close as possible to each other in order for any interference or EMI that gets in to be symmetrical between both differential pairs on the canvas, same as the USB. And as we were talking about the one megabot on the CH chip, it's very important to have a good ground reference. That's why it's a four layer board. So on both the RX and the TX pins, have a good ground reference with nothing noisy below them will give you a much better chance of actually achieving higher speeds, even with a very cheap under 60 cents UR2 USB chip. Getting the maximum out of the UR2 USB chips, the best way to do it again is with a four layer board with good ground planes underneath and no noisy lines around them. Just so you know you're getting power to the board and something's not on fire. I also put five volt indicators and three volt indicators. So it's always good to have little power indicators. Johan, it's your turn. For this project, we've got our USB-C connector over here. We are defaulting to using the MCU's capability to be programmed over USB. So there's no external flashing setup here. We've got our power pins assigned, our designated USB 2.0 differential pair pins here as well. Pull down resistors, all of that good stuff. For our microcontroller, we've got our power section sorted here. Just our, our various decoupling capacitors. We have our boot mode selector switch. We got our LDO here. And then as an additional function, I added this I squared C sensor. Yeah. And so we also have our, our I squared C bus kind of set up appropriately for communication between our MCU and this, this sensor. We got our pull up resistors over here for that sake. Yeah. So we've got short direct connection between our USB connector and our MCU. So we don't have any, any tricky routing. For this design, I used four layers. First layer, signal. Second layer, ground. Third layer, power and fourth layer also signal. But yeah, that's that's kind of it. We got our switches here. We've got our sensor on the flip side. There's no 3D bodies for some of these imported components like the LDO and the, the sensor. Kirsch, it's your turn. So for my schematic, I kept it as simple as I could. And so I've just got, got a USB-C connector connecting to the microcontroller to provide power five volts. And then LDO, I use an LDO down here in this area to get that five volts down to 3.3 volts, max is 3.6. Make sure that they're all sized correctly for the uh, current consumption of at least 120 to 200 milliamps, but two to three times that. It put a shot key diode to avoid reverse current back into the VBUS, pretty basic. And then I have my shield ground connection for the USB-C versus regular ground some decoupling capacitors for the main microcontroller, an LED to the green LED to blink with a current limiting resistor, 220 ohms, and then a switch for a reset and with a little bit of debounce, a parallel capacitor there. And I'm always gonna boot with the one boot configuration. So I tied that to ground with a pull down and then the SWD for, for the debug and then the PCB layout, try to get these as close as possible to each other. Then that's my USB-C. For the PCB stack up, I went with four layer. I always go with two internal ground planes and then a signal power on the bottom. I didn't get the button switched 3D model in time, but this is what it's supposed to be. I'd move this further over to the left, but these are supposed to be on the ex more external side and the LED on the right side, MCU in the middle, toward the middle and decoupling capacitors as close as possible to the three volts. I found out every ground to ground layer one with one signal going on the bottom and or rather the rest of the signals on the top of the PCB. If you're working on your own electronics design or thinking about launching a new electronic product, you're gonna find a lot of helpful resources linked to in the description below. And the winner of this battle is Arwid, who had the fastest time, the smallest design, and also got in the most extra features implementing the CAN bus. Congratulations, Arwid. Want to learn to design a similar STM32 board to the one that they designed in this battle, but with even more features added? Then be sure to check out this two-part tutorial series right here, or if you want to see more competition, here's another PCB design battle that might be even crazier than this one.